Hi everybody, this is Dr. Greg Rose. I'm here at TPI in the 3D lab and I want to talk to you today about pelvic tilt. We get tons of questions about this. What is pelvic tilt? Why does it matter? What happens if you can't do it? So I want to kind of dive deep in that today. So literally, let me first just go over again what pelvic tilt is. Pelvic tilt is a test that we do in our level one class. It looks at your ability to control your core. It looks like this. We tell everybody, get in your five iron posture, cross your arms, and from here, we just want to see, imagine your belt's a bucket of water. I want to see you dump the water in front of you, and then I want to see if you can dump the water behind you, and the entire time maintaining posture. So once again, I'm going to see if I can arch my back, and then I want to see if I can flatten my back. Now, number one, that seems like a pretty simple move. It's not. Make sure you try that at home if you haven't tried it. And it also kind of seems like, well, why does it matter if a golfer can do that? Well, if you really dig into the biomechanics, if you hook players up under sensors and you look at their body in the swing, a, a new picture will start to emerge. Now watch me. Most players, if I look at tour players, they average somewhere between 20 and 25 degrees of forward tilt of the pelvis at setup with a driver. So let's add a driver and I was set up. So you can see I'm kind of dumping the water forward. If I take these players and I go to impact, if I look at most players at impact, I don't know if you saw this because it happened so fast, but if you look at my belt now, it's no longer dumped forward. It's actually literally horizontal. Some players literally at impact are actually dumping the water backwards. So literally what happens on the best players in the world is they start with the water dumped forward. By the time they get to impact, the water's dumped backwards. Now that little move, it seems so simple to go from here to here. Man, that is one of the key moves in golf because it actually is an incredible sign that shows us that you're transferring power from your lower body to your upper body very effectively. So let me kind of take you into our 3D numbers and I kind of want to show you what this looks like. So what I did is I put five players up here. And I would say the three on the left are the typical PGA Tour, LPGA Tour player. So these are what I like to see, what I'd say the most average, what we see with our players. So what I'm looking at here is pelvic bend. That is how much you're tilting forward versus tilting backwards. This horizontal line at the bottom is zero. If you're above that line, it means you're dumping the water forward. If you're below the line, it means you're dumping the water backwards. And if you look at most of our players, like I said, this player's around 23 degrees at start, this one's about 27 degrees at start, and that one looks like it's about 23 degrees at start. So they're all around between that 20 and 25 degrees of dumping the water forward at, at setup. And I want you to notice the shape of this curve. It starts at 22 and it just starts to get less throughout the entire swing. So literally, if I look at these players, they were at, let's say this top player is at 20, let's say 23 at the start. When they get to the top of the swing, it looks like they're about maybe 16. So they've actually, if you look at me, they went from 23 to 16 at the top of the backswing. By the time they get to impact, this player is like at three degrees. So literally it's progressively getting less and less and less. And if you look at the shape of the curve, and I love to look at these graphs because it takes this complicated 3D data and puts it into something that I can visualize. I like to think of like, let's say you went to the fair. If you've ever been to like a state fair and they have one of those slides where you get on that little piece of burlap and you, you go down a slide. This to me looks like a slide. I start here and if I were to push on the slide, I would start to go down the slide and maybe there's a little jump and then I go all the way down. And it looks like a fun slide. I kind of visualize that as a way of remembering what pelvic tilt is supposed to do. It's supposed to start high and then work your way low. Whereas, let's look at these two players over here on the right. Okay, so again, these are good players, but I want to show you some of the things that can go wrong with pelvic tilt. So notice this person over here. On this, on this slide example, if I was on a piece of burlap and I pushed and I started to slide, what would happen is I'd get down to the bottom and now there'd be this huge hill to climb to get to the, over the first, let's say, ramp. And that wouldn't be a fun slide. I'd almost get stuck down here at the bottom. And literally what they're showing, those are examples are this. So if you watch me again, normally they start with this tilt, come to impact and there's less tilt. What these two players were doing is they started with tilt and in the backswing they increased their tilt. So they're dumping more water out in the backswing. So some of these players kind of do it near the top of the backswing and some start right from the start of arching their back. Now if you do this, it creates a lot of stress on your spine. And we get a lot of these players with back pain. You know, we always say, look, your spine's great at rotating right and left and side bending, but it's horrible trying to do two at the same time. If you say extend and now try and rotate, it puts the joints in some really weird positions and it makes it more difficult to, to rotate. So you'll see some of these players struggle with rotation. They tend to lose their posture, come out of their posture. The other thing that happens is if they can't 
posterior tilt if it's really hard for them to go back this way? Well, a lot of times, think about this. Really important to maintain your distance to the ball. If I'm swinging, my lower body moves away, typically, as I dump the water backwards. If I can't dump the water backwards, it's kind of hard to arch my back and swing this way, even though we've seen some players do this. But what they normally do is they drive their lower body forward. Kind of a way to get your pelvis underneath you, which is going to be really important on my next point we talk about. But they can't do it the right way, so they kind of compensate. So what we tend to see is we tend to see these players that they early extend, drive towards the lower body, lower body drives towards the golf ball, or they excessively arch their back, creating all kinds of stress on the lower back. Now, the question is, why does this happen? Why is this an advantage for rotary players? Well, think about how your anatomy works. If you're going to rotate your shoulders, which all great players are going to try and rotate their shoulders, you have a series of muscles called your oblique abdominals that actually rotate your upper body around your lower body. Now, the oblique abdominals attach from your rib cage to your pelvis. So literally, when you contract your oblique abdominals, this happens. The origin and the insertion of the muscle get closer together. It's a great sign that you're actually using your abdominals properly. If you look from the side, if I were to actually take my abdominals and contract my abdominals, this is what happens. Right? If you say contract your abdominals, you would never go like this. You would never arch your back. You would bring those two, your rib cage and your pelvis closer together. So great players, rotary athletes, when they rotate their chest, the oblique abdominals fire, and that's what kind of allows the trunk to grab onto the lower body, stabilizes the lower body, and helps the upper body accelerate around that lower body. So it's actually you using your core muscles properly, getting that energy from the lower body to the upper body, and that's the pelvic tilt. Now, uh, again, keys here. Start with about 20 to 25 with a driver and get less. That's the key. I'm always looking to see, does it get higher during the swing? If it does, then you're you're kind of dumping more water forward, you're not using your abdominals properly, you're probably gonna have to compensate by losing posture, either moving closer to the ball, um, some type of lateral excessive motion, or that S posture, that arching of the back, which really can create problems. I hope that cleans up some of the questions we had about the pelvic tilt. It is, in my opinion, one of the keys to having an incredible golf swing. Hope that helps.